Hello, and welcome to Love, Light, and Healing with Colette Lopain Capella. I'm Colette Lopain Capella, a licensed mental health counselor, Reiki practitioner, EMDR therapist, and healer. I am founder and director of New Day Vitality, located in Larchmont, New York. We provide a holistic alternative approach to psychotherapy and counseling. We offer individual, couples, group, and family therapy, as well as Reiki energy healing and EMDR therapy. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to bring this show to the public and the beautiful community of Larchmont and Mimirnik. A little bit about me, I'm a wife, a fur mommy, an entrepreneur, and a true healer at heart. I've been practicing for many years and have had the profound honor of being a part of so many beautiful journeys to wellness and helping individuals live and be the best versions of themselves, mind, body, and spirit. This show is to bring together the mind, body, and spirit through love and light, wellness, and healing. This show will be helpful, informative, and fun. So sit back and relax and enjoy all the beauty this show will offer you. Each episode, we will bring on an expert guest to discuss important different topics that bridge the mind, body, and spirit, and the beauty of when it's all tied together. Experts will vary from energy healers, teachers, nurses, crystal healers, psychiatrists, doctors, therapists, psychologists, psychics, mediums, yogis, and all healers or light workers, as I like to call us. Uh, on today's episode, actually, this is a follow-up from our last episode, so if you want to tune into that one first, we have Lisa Salvatore again, who is an intuitive reader, energy healer, and also a wellness coach. And we figured, you know what, to kind of follow up on this, we're going to just wing it and jump on, and you're going to do my <laughs> astrology, right? Are you sure you want to do this on there? So, I trust you. I okay. am so ready. Okay. Um, so we thought this might be really fun for the viewers to kind of put myself out there um, to watch this. Practice what you preach. Just got to be yourself. Yes. Just got to own it, right? Yep. Just be authentic. Um, but to show the viewers a little bit about what something, and this is obviously like a brief glimpse of yes. it, mm -hmm. um, but what it kind of might be like for someone to come into your office and have their astrology reading, which I'm really excited about. I'm really excited for this. Okay, so for simplicity purposes, we're just going to do your big three, as I call it, which okay. is your sun, moon, and ascendant. Okay. And we touched upon this in the last episode a little bit, how we all have our own astrological configuration mm -hmm. and that there's 12 planets and, there, excuse me, 10 planets and they're all moving through 12 houses in your chart at different times and there's a lot going on that makes you who you are okay. and lends to a lot of your emotional responses or your issues, your areas, I should say, of drive and uh, physicality and, and how you express your energy and what you hold in is really cool. So it's So it's profound. Um, what we'll do is, I actually have my cell phone. I normally don't do it this way, as no, you know. That's fine. We I don't usually go right prep off, yep. in advance, and then as I sit with the person, I get more as we go through everything. So this is off the cuff. So this yep. this will be fun. But this is um, really exciting, mm -hmm. right? We got to so go right up, yeah, right into it. You I'm just ready. you just give me your information a few minutes ago, so yep. we have that, and that I'm not going to share that because that's very personal. I'm not going <laughs> to share the time of birth and all of that, but I have it, exact time. So the first thing, well, we can say your birth date. So your birth date's February 24th, which makes you a Pisces sun. So when you read your horoscope, your sun sign is going to, obviously, is Pisces. You're going to read the Pisces horoscope. That's all what we know. That's how we've been taught. However, you're, you've got a lot of other signs in your chart. You're not just mm. a Pisces. I mean, you are a Pisces by birth, but your moon, for example, falls in Taurus. Your ascendant is Cancer. So right off the bat, Pisces, Cancer, water signs. You're extremely empathic. No doubt you're a healer. This is why you are who you are and doing the work you do because you're very intuitive and able to tap into people and feel what they need. You're an empath. Wow. There's your, and then moon in Taurus, the moon does really well in Taurus because Taurus is a very grounded earth sign. So when your emotional body, the moon, falls in Taurus, even though you're an emotional person and deep, you, you're able to channel that energy and not fly off the handle and let it get let it carry you away because it's Taurus. Wow. Now, if you were a moon in Pisces, let's just say, and I'll share, you and I have opposite. Your sun in Pisces, moon in Taurus. I'm actually moon moon in Pisces, sun in Taurus. So we, that's why we get along so well. Wow. Because we just have a natural affinity here yes. going on. So moon in Pisces is, if you had all that water and then a moon in, in Pisces on top of that, you'd be like, woo. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to ground yourself because there wow. would be no earth to ground you. 
So anyway, my phone just went off. I got to go back to the no, chart. No, that, that's really <laughs> interesting because a lot of people, when I talk to them, um, because I'm the Reiki practitioner and I'm really into the spiritual and right. all of this stuff. But people, so so it's funny because someone said to me once, "I know you as a very clinical therapist. Mm -hmm. You sit there and you talk about the neuroscience of the brain and the amygdala and the cortex, super grounded, it's super analytical, logical, right? Right. But then the other side of me is super spiritual. There you go. That's very intuitive. Yes. Yeah. Now so here's the other sides. interesting thing. Wow. So then there's 12 houses and each planet falls in a different house. So not everybody has like first, fifth, eighth house in their chart. Those areas of life are where your energy will be concentrated mostly. That's what okay. you've come here to work through and to work on. Wow. And for you, your son in Pisces is in the ninth house. The ninth house is the house that's ruled by Sagittarius. It's all about spirituality and higher learning. Okay. So think about that. The sun is your ego. It's who you are. So your ego is thrown into this life here about teaching, preaching, and learning more about your own spirituality wow. and then bringing that to others. And you have a lot of, um, your moon's in the 11th house of groups and friendships. So emotionally, you do very well in groups. You do very well working with people, getting them motivated. It's wow. a huge part of your, and you're probably an animal lover, I would imagine, because yes. you have a lot of, well, you said you're a fur mommy, but oh, you yeah, have a yeah. lot of 11th house, which is also animals and it's I it humanitarian, it's yes. all of that. Um, then, this is so accurate, by the way, because I have this like obsession with every single animal. Like, if you're at a party, right? You've probably seen the emoji before, like on Instagram, where somebody's like, "Oh, I'm at a party and I find the only dog that's in like that's me." <laughs> like, I'll be sitting in the corner with the dog or the cat, and everybody's like hanging out, and I'm just like with the animals, like. Okay, so love yeah. animals. So now the other thing about you too is, I said I was only going to do the three planets, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> go further. Your Venus and Mars both fall in Aries, so you have a lot of drive. You, it's also, both are in the 11th house as well. So you are a really good motivator. You, your energy goes into getting people to work towards a cause. I wouldn't mm. be surprised if you become some kind of animal activist at some point or something. Like oh, it's very that. much, you have that kind of chart, like of being able to put things out there, charity wow. with your em empathy as well. That would be a good wow. thing for you to do. Now, um, and you know what? I don't think I told you this. So I bought a whole bunch of crystals, right? And then I ended up giving them each Reiki. And my husband's like, oh, God, what is she doing? <laughs> Hundreds of crystals, literally. And I have them in my office. And what I do is I sell them, but not to, to make a profit, to donate the money to a charity, which is actually um, Nino Del Plaza, mm -hmm. um, where it's an animal hospital, to save somebody's fur baby. That's so, awesome. Like, when so you that, you're satisfying that, your chart. Yes. You're living it out. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Now, wow. the other thing that's interesting too with your chart is that you have your Mercury, which is the planet of communication. So that's how we express ourselves verbally and also in written form. And yours is in Pisces in the 10th house of public image and career. So I would say for you, a challenge in this lifetime is when you're communicating to be very clear. Don't leave room for ambiguity. Like you have to be very direct mm. with, because I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like you've gotten yourself into situations when it comes to career where you might have said one thing and felt a different way and expected because you're such an empath that they get it and they don't. Mm -hmm. And then you could be put in a situation that you don't necessarily like because sure. you didn't assert your voice in that matter. So sure. being a little more clear with the communication is a big lesson for you. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're no. communicating obviously very well here. You know, it's not. No, that makes a lot. Cause, um, so it's, <laughs> I'll share this with you. This is really funny that you say this. Um, so when I'm in groups, um, in sort of a professional setting, it's, mm -hmm. and you're not going to believe this. Nobody ever believes this. Um, I'm probably like, you'll say, everybody said you're like the most outgoing person I've ever met. Like you'll talk to anybody, any, everywhere. It doesn't matter. One on one, I'm fine. Doing this, I'm fine. Um, in the office, I'm perfect. Groups of people, perfectly fine. But when I'm in a professional setting and it's a group of people, it's almost like, and you said the voice, I feel like I lose my voice. So I say something and I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't like yeah. the way that came yes. out. Or, and yes. it's like, but what if I'm one on one or if it's four people in a right. professional setting, I'm fine. When it's large groups, it's almost like I get side. Subconsciously, you're worried about what they're thinking of. Yes. You. Yeah. And it's funny because, again, like I'm always like, oh, well, I don't, you know, whatever, what any, everyone has an opinion on mm -hmm. someone. What someone thinks of me, there's, that's their opinion, and it doesn't bother me. It's not going to upset me. I know who I am. I know what I do. I know what's important to me and my values. But yet when I'm put in those circumstances, I notice, just like you said, I say something, I assume that everybody kind of gets right. it, and then I get the reaction where somebody's like, well, what did she mean by that, right? And I'm like, oh, I wasn't very clear. Right. Wow. So that's to... Makes so much sense. Stopping before you speak and really thinking about how yes. you're saying 
an if you're saying it exactly how you want it to be heard. Yeah. Heard. Right. Maybe let because go a little bit of that fear and anxiety too. Exactly. Because that stress is what's getting. Exactly. Yep. And and you know, P Pisces is a sign that has a difficult time with boundaries. Like mm. it's it's very hard to and you know, I know from having my moon there that learning where your emotions end and someone else's begin, that's that's mm. hard because you feel everything. So yes. you you know, you want to save everybody, but you you have to save yourself first. Yes. <laughs> that's the key. Yes. And you as a healer should should know that. You know, yes. that that's that's and you know, it's funny because I always say that to people too, and a lot of my clients are actually empaths as well. Yep. And so, like, they're feeling, and, and I kind of have like a different style and approach. So, somebody might be saying something where another therapist may not lean forward and hold their hand. I will. I mean, that's who I am. That's, right. That's what I. Well, you're a cancer ascendant. You're a very touchy feely. Yeah, person. so I'm great, yeah. you know, and then people really respect that. I mean, but I do have the boundaries where I know some people, like, it's not appropriate. Right. Um, but I always say to myself, I'm very conscious. I mean, we kind of talked about this before that. I don't hold on to the energies with each session because it is so powerful for mm -hmm. me being that empath that I feel like I feel exactly what they're feeling yeah. and I have to say, healthy boundary, mm -hmm. how am I gonna be helpful? How am I gonna be a good support system or resource in this therapeutic you know, environment during sessions? And that moon in Taurus <sighs> helps you with that because it, it allows you that ability to wow. take it on and then give it back, not give it back, but get it off, get it out of your, Yes. I don't, I well, I think to be able to be clear and to be helpful, I can't. Right, take that on. you can't hold on to it. Exactly. You can't hold on to it. Yeah, yeah. you exactly can feel right. I mean, ultimately, of that's course. probably why we're all in this profession because we feel and we want to help and want to heal. But holding on to it is where right, not healthy. Yeah. And wow. then these planets work with each other, and a lot of times it's in a harmonizing way, and then a lot of times it's in a frictional way. So, for example, your Sun in Pisces conjuncts your Mercury in Pisces. That's actually a good thing because it, even though we said you need to work a little bit maybe on, on how you're saying certain things to have it perceived the correct way. Mm -hmm. It's like you're aware of it subconsciously. So sure. you're able to, you have the ability, it's easier for you now that you know this, you'll be able to stop and really think about it and not have it affect you as much as if wow. it was a square aspect because that's frictional. So that would be harder for you. You wouldn't be able to necessarily access it so easily. Okay. So that's a good thing. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Sorry. Because I don't really get, here. no, yeah, it's funny because I don't have a lot of, um, I mean, I've experienced anxiety and stress and fear before, but in that circumstance, is you're right, it's like a group of people in a professional setting. I don't have the voice. I don't think about it before. Yeah. Gotta let that one go. So I don't want to get into too much more because then it's going to start to get really personal in your okay. chart. But I would just say with, with your configurations, I would ask you about your health. Have you had sensitive health like as a child growing up? Did you Were you like quick to catch colds? And yes. Quick? Okay. Because yes. your, your sixth house so. of health is very much like, you know. Wow, yeah. isn't that interesting? So there's a lot going on there. So yeah, so it's it's that's just a little. I mean, that's literally like it's a, a snapshot, but it's to awesome. Total, total snapshot. It goes much deeper than that. It's and very I, accurate. I am holding though. back a bit because I <laughs> I don't I don't want to sit here and keep yes. hammering you with this stuff. But super that's accurate just, though. Well, now you're gonna have to finish it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so no, this is awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, and for again for being a part of a, another episode here with me and and doing this. Yeah, of course. This is so awesome. This is fun. I love it. Really fun. Um, and I also want to thank you uh, again to our beautiful audience. We're privileged and honored to have you a part of each and every show here. And my favorite line, and you heard it last time, so you can do it with me now too. Until next time, love and light to uh, all. I forgot. No mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect.